Here, I want to show two key properties of the natural logarithm represented as a definite integral. We're going to show everything twice. First, right off of the definition. Then, we'll have a slick method using antiderivatives. Now, first property is going to be natural log of a to the r equals r natural log of a. So here, we just take the exponent on the inside, move it to the front. Our definition, if I have x greater than zero, natural log of x is defined as definite integral as t goes from one to x of one over t dt. So here, if I take the graph of one over t, we mark off one and x, we're just taking the area under our graph and above the x-axis. Okay, we'll need later, natural log of one is equal to zero, so if I put one in for x, we're just doing a definite integral from one to one. So that's always equal to zero. Now, first property, we set up our definition. So where we had an x before, I put a to the r. Now, I want to turn this a to the r into an a. That'll let us go from natural log a to the r to natural log of a. So the substitution I'm going to use, I let u be equal to t to the one over r. Take the derivative of both sides. I'll get du equals, okay, we apply the power rule. So the one over r comes down, I take one off the exponent. So we get one over r, t of the one over r minus one, dt. Push everything to the other side. When I do that, I note this t of the one over r minus one could split up. t of the one over r is u, and then I'll just multiply that by t of the minus one. So dt will be equal to r to u over u t to the minus one. Now I also want to change from our t variable to our u variable in the limits. So I'll have u of one is equal to one, u of a to the r is equal to a, and that's what's motivating our substitution. So we push everything over to u. Well, if u goes from one to a, okay, I'll leave the one over t alone, then dt is going to become r du, u, t to the minus 1, and then the t and the t to the minus 1 cancel each other out. I pull the r out, then I'm just left with, okay, r times, then you'll note, this is just the definition of natural log of a, except we have a u where there's a t, and that's not a problem because the u is a dummy variable anyway. So, end result, natural log of a to the r is equal to r natural log of a. And that's what we want. For our next property, we have natural log a times b is equal to natural log of a plus natural log of b. So if we have a product on the inside of natural log, we could split it up on the outside as a sum of each term in the product. We're actually going to have three ways to show this. So before we do it off the definition, Let's show it just using the property we proved before. Now, my first step is, since a and b are positive numbers, okay, we're gonna assume they're both not equal to one, b is equal to a to the e for some e. Okay, so e is just gonna stand in for our exponent. Now, if a is not equal to one, then the graph of a to the x is gonna look like either this or like this. So if b is a positive number, there's going to be some number such that when I run it through a to the x, we're going to hit b. Now, I'm just going to substitute out, follow my nose. So if I have natural log of a times b, it's going to be natural log of a times a to the e. We combine to get a to the 1 plus e. Then I use our exponent rule to bring the 1 plus e out in front. I distribute. So it gives me natural log of a plus e natural log of a. And then I could take the e, put it back in the exponent, and then a to the e is just going to become b. So I get my identity just using our first property. Now, off the definition, natural log of a b. So we take our x, we replace it with a b. Now, what I want to do here, I want to do the substitution that's going to turn the AB into just A. So the idea is I want to go from natural log of AB 
to natural log of A, and I'm hoping natural log of B is gonna show up somehow. So when I do the substitution, okay, a lot easier than the previous one. U is equal to T over B. I take derivatives. We have DU equals DT over B. Push the B to the other side, I get DT equals BDU. We substitute for the limits. So one is gonna to go to one over B, and then our AB is gonna to go to A as promised. We substitute everything in. Okay, so note we have one over BU, BDU, the Bs cancel. And so what we have here then is just DU over U. Okay, and by definition, we could just use natural log of X as an antiderivative. So I'm using first fundamental theorem of calculus here. So I have natural log of U. Okay, we're going from one over B to A. So one over B is B to the minus one. So what we have here, we evaluate, take the difference, natural log of A minus natural log of B to the minus one. Then I use our first property to bring that minus one in front to give us a plus. And then that's my second property using the definition. Now, let's redo both properties using our slick method. This is what we'll wanna use if we have some comfort level with antiderivatives. So, recall, capital F is an antiderivative of little f. It's gonna be the same as just saying the derivative of capital F is equal to little f. Then we have the result. Suppose I have capital F, capital G, okay? Nice enough on the region from zero to infinity. Okay, that's where natural log is defined. I'm gonna want F prime equal to G prime on our region. The conclusion is gonna be F is equal to G plus some constant. So the idea here, if I find one antiderivative, I have all of them just by adding a constant. Now, another thing we'll need, when I do derivatives with the natural log, okay, we're gonna need the chain rule. So to keep track of your chain rule, it helps to think of natural log as being a function of box. So the idea is if h of box is equal to natural log of box, when I take the derivative of h, we're gonna take whatever's in the box and flip it over, so one over box. Okay, you'll see how this helps when we get to it. Now, for our first property, we let capital F be equal to R natural log of X, capital G of X is equal to natural log of X to the R. Take the derivative of F, what do we get? Well, we have R and then derivative of natural log is just gonna be one over X. Take the derivative of G of X, so here's where the chain rule comes in. X to the R is inside the box, so if I take the derivative of natural log, we're just gonna take one over box. So I'll have one over x to the r. Then the chain rule says, take the derivative of your inside function. So I'll have r, x to the r minus one. When we clean this up, we'll have r on top and just one x in the bottom. So these derivatives are equal, which means f is equal to g plus a constant. Now to get that constant, I'll let x be equal to one. So natural log of one is gonna be equal to zero. So it's gonna give me that C is equal to zero. And then I'm just gonna put in X equal to A, and then we get our identity. For our second property, I'm gonna let F of X be equal to natural log of AX, G of X equal to plain old natural log of X. Take derivatives. So the derivative of F, we have natural log and AX is in the box. So we use the chain rule, we will have one over AX. Derivative of the inside is gonna be A, so we get one over X. For G, the derivative of natural log of X is one over X, so these derivatives are equal. That means functions are equal up to a constant. I solve for the constant by letting X be equal to one. So I have natural log of A equals natural log of one plus C. Natural log of one is equal to zero, so our constant is natural log of A. Now, if we let X be equal to B now, then I'm gonna have natural log of AB is equal to natural log of B plus natural log of A, and that's what we want. 